In this final episode of Expedition Almost Zimbabwe, we give you our top eight tips for making your Gonorrhoea National Park adventure a comfortable and exciting one. Before we get going, Buck and I were really lucky. We lived in the park for two years documenting the return of black rhino. So we might be a little bit biased. Nevertheless, it's an incredible place and we highly recommend you putting it on your bucket list. Reservation contact details are below. First tip is for all the South African overlanders. If you're entering the park through the south and you've had a long drive from South Africa, check out Bosman's camp. It's a perfect stopover spot. You can get clean, you can chill, there's fridges, clean showers, clean bedding, and it's the perfect spot to stop overnight before entering into Gonorrhoea National Park. I do want to welcome you into my room at Bosman's. <sighs> Such a good sleep. Okay, so come on in. Everything here, as much as possible, was built within the community, and um, people from the community built the actual structure. The bed is super comfortable. Beautiful, clean, crisp linen, nice, cool, concrete floors, perfect for that October heat or whenever you do come. Great place to unpack. We haven't had the time, unfortunately, because we're just here for one night. Wish we could. And then the bathroom is super spacious. Absolutely love the windows. Guys, Bosman's. South of Gonorrhoea, outside of Gonorrhoea, come and stay, there's six rooms, the staff are awesome, the view is beautiful, the Mornesi is peaceful, the camp is gorgeous, and it's right on the doorstep to Gonorrhoea. Our second tip is, again, if you're in the south of the park, you've had your layover at Bosman's, while you're there and before you rush off into Gonorrhoea National Park, go and check out Manjinji Pan. It is well worth it. Manjinji, a must see if you're in the south of the park. A few k's down, um, a few k's over the river from Bosman's in the communal land. It's a treat this. The trees are spectacular. Unfortunately, we're here towards the end of the dry season and the pan has dried out. The last time we were here, cut to epic shot, the bird life was just insane. Highly recommend it. Great place to come and bring your kids because you can walk around, you can run around. Great place to stretch your legs after a long drive. Camping facilities are clean, well put together, well thought through. It's just a great stop and all benefits go to the community. So be sure to check it out and make it part of your trip. Gonorrhoea is vast. It's a big park. There's 5,000 square kilometers of it and you're gonna need fuel to keep those tires turning. Fear not, you can get fuel in the south in Makondi Bay Station and in the north at Chapinda Pools. So I'm in Makonde, this is Mr. Alex Shavani and he's got a message for you. Oh, you can come and get diesel from Makonde and petrol. Woo-hoo-hoo! <laughs> 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 well done, Alex. Hello, thank you. <laughs> Tip number four, while you are getting your vehicle refueled, you can pop around the corner at Makonde and go and see Mr. Ndlovu. He has the most awesome vegetable garden there, filled up with green veg. And so you can stock up on your green veg and not only that, but you can support the Gonorrhoea Conservation Trust as well as the local community. So it's a win-win for everyone. And then you can take your fresh green veg directly into the park. Okay, here's a top insider tip. If you're in Makonde or in the south of Gonorrhoea and you find you've run out of your vegetables or some fresh greens, come along, Mr. Effort and Lovu <laughs> is the man with the green fingers, the head nurseryman at Makonde Nursery. And 
we're going to be able to buy some fresh veg from him and you can too. What have you got for us today? I'm growing uh, kovo, cauliflower, carrots, spinach, uh, tomatoes, green pepper, herbs. Also, I still have got some beetroots. So Thank you. Them. Thank you so much. Ah, job. The other thing that Mr. Nlofu does, besides grow delicious carrots, is find tree seeds along the riverbed, indigenous tree seeds, and grows trees. So if you fancy buying a tree that's indigenous to this area, Mr. Effort Nlofu is your man. They're good. By far and away, Chilocho Cliffs is the most iconic landmark in the park and the viewpoint is probably the one place where you'll bump into a few people. Now, if you're like Buck and want to avoid the small talk, Chamu Chunzu is our next top tip. The iconic landmark of Gonorazoa National Park is the Chilocho Cliffs. Everybody knows about it and when they come here, everybody wants to see it. Most people come right here to the Chilocho Cliffs viewpoint but a lesser visited, less known about viewpoint to view the cliffs from is Chamu Chinzu. Just slightly down the way from Chilocho, you've got Kundani to look at, you've got some pans, you've got this 180 degree uninterrupted wilderness. Little sign of man, pure bush, and that is flippin' special. Firewood. Don't pick it up from the bush, you're taking away the squirrels' houses. Boop. Buy your firewood from the park. It's responsibly sourced and it's the right thing to do. You may not know this. This is our top insider's tip. But you should never, ever, ever collect firewood in the bush. You are contributing to soil erosion, you're taking away houses for lizards, squirrels, small little things and just generally depleting the soil cover. Hey Brighton. Yes. So Gonorzo has responsibly sourced firewood. And this is Mr. J. Keno. He's going to tell you how much it costs and where you can buy it from. You can buy at Chipinda reception and the best camp reception and Mabalauta reception and Chingul campsite just four ways so a bundle is five dollars US or eight five rand so it's good it's good as the saying goes take only photographs and leave only footprints. But in Gonorzo's case, you're not walking anyway. It's pretty dangerous without a pro guide. Stay in your vehicle. But if a tree has fallen over the road, actually Buck's gonna take this one. Okay, yeah, here's a quick, hi. Sorry, I'm Buck, I'm normally behind the camera. But yeah, here's a quick, very quick tip. So I know everybody, you go onto outdoorwarehouse.com and you buy an ax. Now's your opportunity to use it. There's a fallen down tree on the road. Instead of driving your vehicle around it and creating more erosion, bust out that fancy axe, chop the tree, move it, do your bit for conservation. That's it. Move the branch. The road is now drivable and we don't have to go around and create more erosion. Top tip for you. Our eighth tip, Chivalila Falls. Chivalila onomatopoeia in Tlengue for waterfall. It's a viewpoint in the north overlooking the Rundi River, the perfect place for a sundowner. And our final top tip or lesser known spot is the Chivalila Falls viewpoint. 
it overlooks the Chipilila Falls. The light's a bit hectic and it's still pretty hot now, but in a couple hours time, this is gonna be spectacular and gonna be the perfect place to have something cool and cold and refreshing. The park is vast. It's massive. It's just over 5,000 square kilometers. You are not gonna be able to do it all in one go unless you have, I don't know, like three months off. So take it slow, take it chill, don't rush around and take it all in. Connor Zoo is an exceptionally well-managed park. And as soon as you enter it, you can feel that. Yeah, I just feel so privileged to have been, in a small way, welcomed in and a part of the park for a couple of years and I feel extremely privileged to be back. It's an exceptional landscape and it is such a vast landscape. It's just an awesome, awesome park and I really encourage people to come and visit but to come and visit with respect. You know, don't pick up firewood around you, buy firewood. It's all responsibly sourced firewood here. Don't, you know, just be respectful to the people that come next to you. Just enjoy it. Come and enjoy it and be cognizant of the wilderness around you when you do because it is an exceptional park. It's pretty special. And then the other thing I want to say is that the thing that makes Gonorzo so rare is it is a proper wilderness. It's a landscape experience. It's You're not going to trip over game. It's about settling in and appreciating the space and the wildness of that space. And there's very few, there's certainly very few places left. In fact, I can't think of any. There are, there are a few um, national parks besides Gonorzo, but it's one of the few places left in Zim where you can drive from the top to the bottom, from the east to the west, and not drive through a single private concession. It's pretty exceptional. So, yeah, I, I just, it's such a special space. It's beautiful, it's diverse, every little bit changes. There's a lot to see, but mostly I just wanna encourage people when they do come to just sit and soak it all in and just enjoy it.